Glad to see you're back with us. This is Heath Close with Build Box, and this is part four of the Make Your Own Game series. In part three, we learned about world settings and character settings, and we created new levels for our game Glitch, which is starting to shape up quite nicely, I might add. Now, in part four, we are going to make our game Glitch unique. We are going to achieve this by adding in a new gameplay element, and then we are going to learn about character components. So let's just dive right in. Making our game unique obviously started with the amazing graphics we got from a very talented artist. The game truly looks spectacular, but unique doesn't end there. We need to offer a gameplay element that sets our game apart and makes it memorable and fun. In part one, we used the creator to get us started on this journey, but we want to offer more than just a good starting point, so let's add a new gameplay element. I think it would be neat if in Glitch we came upon a barrier that we can place anywhere on the screen that narrows the real estate our player will have to maneuver around obstacles, and we could offer some variety on that barrier by leaving openings to travel through and force the player to make decisions on which side of the screen to travel on. But the barrier itself isn't the fun and memorable part. We are indeed going to add a twist to this new element later in the video. So let's start by importing a new graphic which is very similar to our walls. Let's duplicate scene 10 by clicking on it and hitting D to duplicate it. And let's delete our swirly enemies from this scene so we have more room to work this all out. Now to import our new element, we'll just drag the graphic into the object option on the drag and drop wheel. Select the object in the assets panel and check the collision shape. Remember, if there was a problem, the reset button usually gets a collision shape dead on with squares and rectangles. Okay, so let's hold shift down while we drag this to keep it in a nice line and we'll put it near the bottom of the scene and we'll duplicate it upwards and we'll shift drag this one to the top of the scene. Now let's solo this scene by selecting it and hitting S. So before we test this, this would be a good time to mention something that I alluded to in part three and that is BuildBox having the ability to make our game generate all our scenes in the order they appear at the bottom of the scene editor or generate them randomly for endless gameplay. Let's keep that in mind and go ahead and test our new barrier. Also in part three, I said one of the things you have to keep in mind when designing your levels is if you are going to randomize your scenes, one scene has to work with all the other scenes in the game. What we see here with this small and unplayable gap is an example of why. Since it serves no function, it just looks sloppy. And if this mistake kills our player, that will cause issues with player retention. So let's make this more compatible to similar setups from other scenes. Let's drag these more into the middle Remember holding shift while dragging to keep things in a nice line. And let's adjust our mountain enemies to be a little easier to live through on this scene. I'm holding shift while resizing these to keep their aspect ratio. All right, now let's test this out again. That's much better. This looks more compatible with other scenes that might contain the barrier. So let's keep that in mind when we include this new barrier in our scene design. All right, so I like our little barrier here, but let's make this fun and memorable by giving it a twist. What if when we hit this barrier, it threw us up against the wall as a punishment mechanic, essentially making it a bumper? The way we are going to achieve this is by learning about a character component called advanced move. In fact, this whole time, you have been seeing advanced move components in action every time we play Glitch. Combined with a switch button on our game's user interface, which we will see in a later video, 
advanced move has been changing our character's linear velocity every time we tap the switch button that's covering the screen. Here you can see that this component gives us our initial velocity at the game start, and then these two have been changing that velocity every time they see the switch activated. So let's add another one that changes the direction when it collides with our barrier, no matter which direction the character is going. To do this, let's set it to collide and select our barrier as the affected asset and give it a very, very tiny timeout so the calculation stops immediately. The best way to change an object's direction to go in the opposite direction is to change its positive or negative value to the opposite value. So let's set our advanced move to multiply our x-axis velocity by negative 1 and have no change on the y value. Now when we hit the barrier, we should see an instant change in our direction along the x-axis. All right, that works perfectly, but let's make it even more obvious that we've hit this barrier by multiplying our x-axis velocity by negative 2. That way, the bumper really throws us good. This looks perfect. Now, what would be really neat is if the bumper changed in some way to provide even more feedback when we hit it. I think I'd like to achieve this by making this an enemy that does zero damage. This way, when we hit it, we can do damage to it and trigger an animation called a taking damage animation. This will look really neat when we get it all set up, and there are only a few steps to it. So let's start by selecting the barrier in the Assets panel to the far left. That will reveal its global options in the Options panel to the far right. Now in the global options, let's add a couple global components to it, one being health and the other being damage, which we are going to set to zero because we want it to be an enemy that doesn't actually kill us. In order for us to hit it and not destroy it, it needs more health than we can do damage. So let's just give it a bunch of health, more than it will ever need. And now let's drag a PNG sequence into the taking damage animation slot. All right, now in the scene, we need to select these and make them enemies. And let's see what we get. As you can see, that animation isn't being triggered. And the reason is, we haven't set our character up to do damage to it. So let's select our character in the Assets panel to the far left and bring up its global options in the Options panel to the far right. And let's add a damage component. Okay, let's test this again and see if we trigger the taking damage animation. That looks pretty cool, right? Now let's take our scene off of Solo and see how adding damage to our character affects the rest of the assets in the game. That's interesting. See how when we die on something, we also destroy it? That's because now we are doing damage, and by default, all enemies have one health. So now we just need to give all our items a bunch of health in their global options, and we'll be good. I'm just going to select each one in the Assets panel and add a health component to each one. Give it a bunch of health, like 999 health. Now when we die on things, they live through our damage, but we get to trigger that bumper that does zero damage to us and trigger that neat animation. We also need to make sure all our bumpers get set to enemy to make this trick work. Okay, so adding that unique element made a lot of cool progress on our game, giving us even more options to use as we design more scenes. In the next video, we are going to get into actions, lighting effects, and the awesome particle effects, and also adding a logic piece. So actions, effects, and logic in the next video. So come on back for that one, and I will see you in part five.